Thank you for going to write that down. Alrighty, so go ahead and do this one. First, the three ship one. So, yeah, we'll put Poe first, that's a good idea. So uh, standard Poe with uh, Is it PS9 Poe? Shit. Sorry, let me see, maybe I can see the, the picture. Yeah, it's PS9 Poe. Okay. VI? Yep. Uh, Two. Optics. Optics. All the thrusters. Title. Attention, next wing players. Round three for day two has begun. Round three for day two has begun. Okay. Uh, and then, who's is that? Jess. Yes. With uh, flight assist. Okay. Integrated and climb thrusters. And then Loric, I'm assuming? Yes. Trick shot and Ray. Trick shot and Ray, okay. What's up there? Uh, that is Chris. Uh, no, that's Kyle Metal. Right, right, okay. AKA Earthworm. <laughs> We've got four ships, right? Four ships. We got, we got Jess with um, M9. Okay. Integrated and optics. Interesting. I like that. Next one. Rourke. Huh? I got their whole cape on tape. It was riveting. Yeah. They flew off the board and then rolled. <laughs> Uh, so I'm sorry, I got the on that. Work. PS4? Yep. Have the whole video. With uh, TLT? Yep. Chewbacca crew? And title? Yeah. Uh, Captain Rex? What? Next one? So, Captain Rex, empty. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, Ezra Sheepapin? Score to settle. Oh, okay. Uh, gunner and R three eight two. Oh, not tail gunner. Even though that's a legal upgrade on him. R three. Is that hundred? That is one hundred. All right. That's party. Hello everyone, my name is Dion Morales, host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and I am here co-commentating with D. Yoon of the Minox Squadron Podcast. That's uh, D. Yoon Morales. That's right. <laughs> so we are in the final round of Swiss of our X-Wing World Championships. Both of these players are X and 2. This is a, essentially a play-in game for the cut. They're trying to get as much MOV as possible. These were... Uh, in my opinion, the two most wholesome lists within the first <laughs> ten tables, and uh, they got to play each other. So this is going to be uh, this is going to be some good X-wing. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, you, you say wholesome, but I, I still see a twin laser turret, and uh, <laughs> but it's on the hawk. I, right. Exactly. I said the most wholesome. I didn't say it was totally wholesome. I feel you. <laughs> Um, so this match is brought to you by the Patreon subscribers and the Twitch Prime subscribers of the Gold Squadron Podcast. Thank you all of you for your support. So go ahead and break down uh, Chris's list, D. Well, Chris is, uh, he's, this is really interesting, right? So I, I, that aforementioned hawk, it's uh, Rourke Garnett. He's that, he's that fellow that, uh, that can, uh, in combat, boost up uh, pilot skill up to 12 to, to make sure something shoot first. Uh, he's got uh, twin laser turret, as I mentioned. Um, Wow, I'm liking here. Oh, uh, Chewbacca crew to uh, keep them sturdy and a uh, moldy crow title for more of the same. Uh, there's a Captain Rex. I'm reading this all out of order, as you can see on screen. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, Ezra Bridger, like full uh, stress bug with the with the gunner and R3A2. Uh, interesting call with score to settle. Um, I don't I don't know how often you push through damage with uh, just two dice. Is score to settle a may or a must? 
Um, I, I believe it's mandatory. So, so I'm wondering with the gunner trigger, if he if, it, if the focus comes up the first time, maybe he just doesn't do it, and you do it the second oh, time. Oh, that's what you meant. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's mandatory you have to call a right, condition yep. target. But, I, I, yeah, I, I believe it is an optional choice so that you can, you, you can trigger gunner if... Uh, if that's the case. And uh, Just Pava with uh, M9G8 for uh, them re-rolls mm -hmm. offensively or defensively, depending. Uh, advanced optics and integrated. So that, what do you think about that advanced optics? That's not something we usually see on Just, right? No, it's it's not. I think he's just opening up his, uh, his boosting, uh, excuse me, his uh, repositioning. Or so he's, he gets the, uh, the, the re-rolls already from being with, with his buddies. He's going to hold on to a focus already. And then you have inner um, flight assist astromech for the barrel roll, so essentially you can get barrel roll boost if you want it. Well, it's M9 G8. Oh, sorry, I'm thinking. Yeah. So, no, so, uh, with so you're opening up the boost. And, and the or, or switching locks. Switch for, and locks. For the yep. Droid. Yep. I like it a lot. You gonna hit up Kyle's? Say it again. Oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> Kyle. I was looking at the, the chat here. Uh, Kyle Metal, also known as Earthworm, uh, on from the Vassal League. Uh, thank you for all your work with the Vassal League, Kyle. Woo. Um, it's running Poe Dameron PS11, so definitely the top uh, top PS. Not quite more than 12, where Rourke is going to be boosting somebody uh, with standard VI R2D2 optics integrated and the Black One title to take away those target locks, um, which it won't super matter uh, in this matchup, but if it could come up. Jess Pava, also with Flight Assist Astromech, Prime Thrusters Integrated Astromech, so keeping that uh, that inter that Flight Assist movement open even when he's stressed or after talent rolls and things like that. And Lorik with Trick Shot and Ray, both at 100 points. Um, Ray is just is always good on Ozatex, especially Lorik. So you can have focus and reinforce when you engage. Um, makes him hit a lot harder, even if you're, uh, especially when you're going through obstacles. Yeah, the black one could be, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's somewhat minor, but uh, it could still come into play with M9G8. Right. Uh, with, with Especially with TLT in play. Very true. And a couple of things to look at here. Um, with Rourke being in the squad, what you're going to see is Rex TIE Fighter is going to be boosted to PS12 to make sure he gets his ability off right away um, and before he can possibly be killed or attacked. So that, that condition can proc right away. It, it kind of serves as a bigs, right? Because you kind of have to shoot, or you, you're going to want to shoot Rex in order to have your full <laughs> attack ability. You're not going to want to shoot Rex. Sometimes those TIE fighters just <laughs> refuse to go, but you pretty much have to. You, you can't afford to have your attacks blunted while you're taking the full force of uh, your opponent. Yes. Um, did, did I uh, see this correctly? That uh, it, look, it looks like uh, Chris Schaefer has the initiative. I think he moved his just first. I, I, I sort of missed it. Yeah, we'll double check that here. I'll make the initiative token disappear until we confirm. Now, we talk about when we get to the end game, a uh, couple of things we always look at, right, is point breakdown. Poe sitting at 41 points. Um, if we get to an end game where Chris has two of his ships, not including Rex alive, that's more than Poe in the end game. So something to be aware of if we get a one-on-one -on -one matchup that's going to be in Kyle's favor. I I think um, to take nothing away from Chris, uh, just just by dint of Poe being on the board, I think he's got uh, a nominal edge just uh, because he's more resistant to those auto thrusters and he's moving. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry to to the twin laser turret shots because of auto thrusters. Right. And just moving last and repositioning with uh, optics and all that Poe shenanigans, the, the pocus. Good stuff. Ah, I, mi I misclicked on Poe uh, when I was building the list. I clicked integrated astromech instead of auto thrusters. Let's oh, go, ahead and, go um, ahead and fix that on Poe. Yeah, it's, it's auto it thrusters. It is auto thrusters. I just made a mistake there. I read 41 because it said 41 in the overlay. So he's at 43 points. Easily correctable. Boom. It's like it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Just like X-Wing 1.0? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I do want to talk about, a lot of these matches, while a lot of the tools that people will be using will be different or not exist in 2.0, this is, this type of matchup is going to show you, it's going to be all about positioning, right? They have four ships. You know, besides the Hawk, everybody else is an arc. Um, we can at least learn a little bit about 
uh, some strategic movement and tactics when it comes to positioning arcs here, especially I think the Jess Pava play is something that can uh, you can actually learn something that's transferable to 2.0. Oh, absolutely. Um, wow, I just blanked out there. I'm tired. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's been a long weekend. It's been a long weekend. Um, it, it'll, it'll be interesting because with ships like Jess. Hi, Jeremy. Look at that beautiful man. It's good to see you smile, Jeremy. Shout out, Crates. No, dang it. <laughs> They're a plague, infectious. Um, you, have, you have to set up uh, kill boxes in order to, to destroy <laughs> enemy ships. Yes. And uh, that takes a bit of more uh, uh, of planning. You can't just, you know, roll around with a turret. Mm -hmm. You can't just, uh, you know, reposition multiple times. Go wherever you want to be. And uh, Chris wanted me to, to to rib you a little bit, D. Sure. Um, I, I I love it when he right. uses it, when he uses his uh, ribbed. Yes. <laughs> so he 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 wanted to point out that he was the creator of FSR, apparently, not Jerry. That Jerry got it from him. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah. It's I, it doesn't matter. It's it's who plays it to the top, right? Oh, got him. <laughs> 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 Just made, made me giggle a little bit. Chris, he, he always makes me giggle like a schoolgirl. Why are we talking about him? Let's talk about the <laughs> <laughs> game that's happening here. <laughs> uh, so it uh, looks like Chris is taking uh, the long way around, looking for a more opportune um, path to, well, to bring all the ships to bear. Well, one thing we got to talk about, it, it's, it's unavoidable. We have to talk about, talk about final salvo numbers. How are we doing here? We got three, three, three. That's nine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. All right, so Kyle's actually ahead. Usually these four ship builds are uh, have more than that. <laughs> but Rourke. But Rourke, Bringing yeah. just the one sadness to the table. Not for long. Not for long. The Hawk. The hawk I, bought, I bought a fifth Hawk. You, you got one? I bought one here, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I wanted to uh, get uh, Jan, Jan, Jan? Right, do, do the polls. Is it Jan or Jan? Jan, Jan it's Jan. Jan, yeah. Jan Sversky. I yep. want to get his uh, autograph on the Rebel Operative. Beautiful. You know how Europe does? Yes. So I figured, yeah, I'll just I'll just buy the pack, and I'll need a fifth hawk anyway. Uh, real quick, uh, shout out to BMF153 for becoming a Twitch Prime subscriber. Oh, man, more more vassalers jumping yeah. on Yeah. Well, this is this is like the vassal, one of the vassal guys, right? So right. you're going to see them, see them all jumping on. So I'm curious to see if Chris is kind of playing the game. He's going to go the long way around and say, I want to engage you just with all my forces in a block. Because um, he hasn't broken out of his initial formation. He's just kind of been running up the board. And uh, it, it would behoove him, too, to have as much space to operate as he is running the, the full-on four block. Whereas uh, Chris is a... Sorry, <laughs> Kyle's. <laughs> yeah. Kyle's squad is a little bit more uh, flexible in terms of its uh, ability to separate and then flank and come back together if necessary. Um, Mostly Poe. Poe can, you know, do. Poe can do whatever things. he needs to. And then if he gets banged up, he can uh, rejoin the, the Loric protection. All right, so we're getting some uh, ship moving here. Well, that, that is a seasoned <laughs> player, it, knowing that three bank will fit. Yep. That's confidence. L look at that. Look at that. Like, I think, I think if we didn't have the camera we did, that would look like a bump. <laughs> <laughs> you could barely see the, the, the map between there. All right, Jess, that's a flight assist boost. Always checking for check, gotta check for that target lock to see uh, where things are going to be coming. Oh, looks like we're flipping the formation. He doesn't want to engage in those rocks. He, does, he doesn't want to turn in because because uh, uh, Kyle's got the angle to to, to bank in and mm -hmm. slice him up. This this question will at, will show how many. Uh, let's see, this will show us right here. The Hawk doesn't have a K-turn, right? Negative. 
So two forward, it'll turn behind next turn. Well, it's a support ship. He's going to be using that uh, ability to fire first. And now Ezra's in snap. Uh, sorry, he doesn't have snapshot. He has score to settle. Sorry. Oh, now he's in snapshot position. What do you make of that score to settle? I'm, I'm still... That's an interesting choice. I think, it's, I think it's simply to have mods on the second shot to have more opportunity to... Uh, to hit, we did have somebody in the chat confirm that it was a, it is a may to uh, to ch change it from a focus to a crit. Right. So you just use it the second time uh, with the gunner trigger. So Poe swooping in. I think the three bank is my favorite looking maneuver in the game. Like, you just got this really wide movement. It, it feels very Star Wars. I don't know. It's also the screw, screwiest yes. geometrically. You could be facing a rock and just, like, totally be to the side of it. It's fantastic. I guess I'm just obsessed with this uh, score to settle because it's such a defensive vulnerability without, mm -hmm. uh, particularly without any uh, draw their fire elsewhere in the squad. He's. I think he's just leaning on, uh, leaning on Ezra's ability. He's like, I, right. I, constantly am changing focuses to, uh, to evades. Here we go. No, he's, he's banking in. Uh, he's right. He assumed the the, the turn in. Mm-hmm. But flight assist should be able to take care of that. So we're gonna be checking range here. Poe might have a might be able to clip Jess at range three. Chris going to the other side of the table. Oh, was that Poe? Yeah. My bad. Looks like Jess is just in. That's pretty close. That might be that might be judge call worthy. Well, if they're perfectly parallel, they either both have shots. Or they both don't. Right. Yep, they called the judge. That's the right way to do it. That's too close to call. And while they wait for that judge call, I want to say thank you to Jeff Wilder for being a subscriber for five months in a row. You're awesome. Woo. Balin Balinda Mood has been a subscriber for eight months. And Super Goat for, for just uh, clicking that Twitch Prime subscriber uh, button again. Thank you so much for all of your support. So, yeah, we're going to wait for the judge over here. Looks like they already made the, the call that it was out of range. So they are setting dials already. So who won the Battle of the Podcast game? The Minox Squadron Podcast took the best United States podcast. Uh, that's How that feel? I'm, I'm a little sheepish. I'm a little <laughs> sheepish about it. I mean, like, I'm really hard on myself, even more so than you know, when, I, when I play. Yep. I, you know, like if I ever listen to our own podcast, I'm all, oh. I always feel ashamed. You, you know what I mean? You're the, you? Yeah, you're, you're always your own worst critic. Absolutely. Um, well, I said last night, just to, as a thank you, um, there, there was a point when I was fully ready to, to quit the game, mm -hmm. but I could not quit the X Wing community. Yep. So, yeah, thank you. Thanks to all of you for your uh, encouragement. And, and, yeah. and your patience has paid off. How's that? 2.0. Oh. It's right around the corner. <laughs> Indeed. It's right there. We can see it. And thanks, Dion, for uh, hold, holding that shindig. No problem. We're going to do it bigger Play, and better uh, next year. Oh, for real. Well, get a hold of us. We'll, we'll oh. throw in. It, it, it's it's going to happen. This was this was the beta test. Is this something people would like? Oh, people really like that. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> and uh, actually, a big big thanks, Dion, for uh, the opportunity to, to stroke my ego. Now, now like, my, my head's just going to swell. I'm going to be arrogant. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course we're the best <laughs> podcast. And of course you brought me on because I'm the best. You're the best, you're the podcaster. best host. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right, so it looks like all four of Chris's dials are set. Kyle is still thinking through. So here, just a quick uh, gameplay question for you, D. When I play, I usually don't put my dials down until I have all my decisions made. Or do you put one down at a time as you finish them? Do you hold I do. them all? I put them all down. Um, I, I do play quickly mm -hmm. uh, compared to most players. I put my I put all my dials down and then I try and read my opponent. Okay. Uh, you know where where they're looking at the board, you know decisions that they might be trying to make, and then you can always change your dials if necessary. Right. I like it. 
Because some people, you know, there's there's lots of different schools of thought on it, right? It's like, sure. well, if you put one dial down at a time, um, you know, you're, you're telling your opponent you have these decisions made. This other one is, is uh, giving you trouble. Well, you know what? If my opponent can keep of all that, can, can, can keep track of that yep. while doing his own maneuvers, then uh, you know, more more power to to uh, her or him. Um, if I notice that they're not setting their dials and just watching me set mine, well, yeah. then that hits another level of gamesmanship. So uh, after that full rotation <laughs> around the board, looks like ultimately they're yeah. So we got Jess on Jess action there. Um, Kyle was able to fit that three bank next to that rock very confidently. We're probably going to get a, a flank in here from Poe. Man, this is this is where a barrel roll on the X-wing would be fantastic. Be able to turn in and then barrel roll out to get out of some of these arcs. Why? Why are you doing that? Like, I, I just realized I got to make it through store champ season too. Yeah. <laughs> Not thinking about 2.0. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep, yep, we're, you know, we're, we're going to be working on that content for the next couple months, trying to uh, bridge bridge the gap between 1 and 2.0. X-Wing 1.5. We're com it's, it's coming. Your patience will be paid off. I got to check all those uh, files I wrote up, or was in the process of writing up to. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but it, I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased about it. Yes. It's going to be fantastic. Which you were nominated for uh, best X-Wing articles out there, the oh, Dragon Files. De deservedly did not win. <laughs> I was un unable to keep a, a schedule that, that I would have been happy with. All right, so here comes, uh, looks like Rex. Two banking in the formation. He will have Arc on Jess. It's probably gonna end up being Chris's primary target because he'll be able to target uh, with all his ships. Uh, maybe not Rourke. Rourke might be just out. So is uh, Chris's uh, Pava target locked onto anything? Um, it is unclear. It might be the those Mandalore locks. Yes. Chris's uh, Jess Pava is right here. That's the blue target lock, the green one, and the red one's on uh, the Jess. Gotcha. So Lorik swooping in. He is outside of range one. Yeah, I don't think that's in. So Jess might not have that Lorik back up there. So, uh, you know, Chris just scooted up the board and then swung back around with the, the K turn. Um, obviously, um, a much easier maneuver and path than the than the one Kyle took. And uh, you know, like. Uh, you're all like I've been. You you must have been in those shoes mm -hmm. a bunch, right? Like uh, obviously you you don't want the burden of execution on yourself. You don't want the more difficult path. But then you think, I can do this. Yeah. I I, I can get him through the rocks and get him faced up in the you know the the arcs I want. Um. So taking a look, I think the score to settle token is on Loric. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's the score to settle token, um, on the bottom of his base there. Well, that's intriguing because that means. With, with the 180 arc, Lorik will, you know, He's got some ample, ample opportunity to shoot. So we got a bank in here from Poe. He's going to be in Ezra's arc for sure. So we're going to get that boost. Get some out of Jess's. It's fantastic. And that's going to be a range one shot on Rourke. Did uh, Rourke uh, PS12 anything up? Not quite yet. I think we're about to get into combat. Yep, he PS12's Rex. Here we go. Uh, Rex, one hit. And go, go nothing. TIE Fighter. Get the shield. Now we're to Poe. Range one into the Hawk. All right. Might see uh, Chewbacca getting popped uh, early here. All right, so that's going to be hit crit there. Oh, he's taking it. 
Nice. Thrust <laughs> control fire. Well, he can look at it. Right. Thrust control fire. So there could be worse crits. He's got plenty of focus tokens banked up. And Lorik, it looks like he might have a shot. Here's Lorik. Spending the focus from Ray. Sorry, was that Lorik on the Sheath of P? Yeah, Lorik on the Sheath of P just got a shield. And I guess then the score to settle, either they missed it or it's on something else? Yeah. Hit eyeball. This would be Ezra into Jess. And there comes the gunner. Just a crit and evades it. So no damage, but double stress. Check it for TLTs. No valid target. We're going to get a range one shot from the Hawk. <laughs> Two dice Hawk. There it is. He's going to spend one of those focus. Two of eights. Okay. So we're probably going to get a turnaround maneuver from Poe here, right? Uh, gotta. <laughs> K-turn should fit according to the geometry mm -hmm. by, by, by looking at that rock. Got plenty to clear there. Or it could talent roll. This is just one from uh, Kyle's Jess Pava. One reroll. Nada. And now we're on to Chris's Jess. So I really like that M9G8 action there. Yeah. There go. Hit crit. Coming into Jess Pava. Natty's. Got him. Okay, so going into this, list, this is about this is your second round of engagement. Uh, who would you say is ahead? What sort of damage are we look, looking at here? So the Hawks taken one shield. Uh, Rex is still full. Ezra has lost one shield. So total, Chris has lost two shields. Um, Jess is fine, but double stressed. Loric is also fine. Uh, I'm sorry, Jess has lost one shield. And Lorik hasn't taken any damage. So one shield to two shields. Yeah, it's, it's tough to say, so we, we have to look at uh, positioning. Um, I, I think uh, Chris might have a good shot at laying uh, good damage on uh, Jess, especially now that she's uh, stressed out. Especially if uh, Lorik can't. Lorik should be able to. Can he clear that rock? The two hearts to the left? That's going to be tight. It's a little tougher uh, gauging on uh, the monitor. Mm -hmm. Maybe next world I'll, I'll get like a full 3D projection of the board <laughs> state. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for everything you do. No problem, man. That'd be great, though. Wouldn't that, like, if we could commentate and actually, like, look and move stuff? Like, oh, okay, that's where it Someday. is. <laughs> Someday. Someday uh, we'll have uh, these amazing, like, X-Wing will <laughs> just all be, like, hollow. Well, what's the game called uh, that they're playing in the Falcon? Uh, just hollow chess in it. Hollow chess. I'm sure somebody in the chat will tell us. What's, what's, what's the name of that? Uh, Don't have to worry about bumping or executing them, I mean. <laughs> Things just work. Mm -hmm. Knocking ships around won't be a thing. Oh no. <laughs> Man, that reminds me. I miss uh, Sable Griffin being here at Worlds with, uh, in his steampunk outfit. With yes. Those massive sleeves, catching ships, knocking them over. Yep. <laughs> the Jarek is the name of that game. Oh, that's right. Thank you. X Wing Community. Yes, I am joined today by D. Yoon of the Minox Squadron podcast, co-commentating with us today. And this is the uh, last round of Swiss before we jump into the top 16. Uh, I do want to talk about the final. Obviously, we can't stream the final FFG will be, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be streaming the live crowd reaction. <laughs> I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to focus it on the uh, the the uh, live streaming area and uh, if you can keep that window open just to show kind of how, how's the crowd feeling get the get the feel for the room 
It's a cool experience there. I like it. There's a reason to have multiple monitors. Mm-hmm. Three bank. Yeah, I didn't want to get her caught up in there. So it's going to take Kyle a couple turns to uh, clear those stress. Well, he'll still get the He's got prime re thrusters. Oh, even better. Prime thrusters doing the work so here. Good. Is that going to squeeze him? He's going to try. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> His hands are His too hands shaky. His hands are shaking, man. <laughs> So it looks like the uh, deciding that it does not fit. That would have uh, set up an amazing couple of shots on Rourke. Um, in the chat, yes, we will be we will be uh, streaming the top sixteen. We'll go sixteen eight. Uh, four, we need to uh, come to a compromise with the X-Wing Junkies to figure out what's going to be happening there. And then uh, we'll stream the crowd reaction. For you should sell before it. <laughs> That's a nice uh, combination with uh, flight assist and... Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> we got <gotcha. laughs> you. Thank you. With uh, flight assist and prime thrusters. I feel like that's a massively underrated upgrade in the, in the tech slot, mostly because of how good advanced optics is. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, you know, when, when I was running FSR for a little bit, it's or fantastic. Any, anytime I ran Jess, yeah, all the the red maneuvers or debris just didn't matter. Um, well, we just saw in your last match, uh, yep. prime thrusters on Kylo, which I'm an advocate of, mm -hmm. uh, with with all the stress control in, in the meta. Oh, we knew that K turn was coming. <laughs> yep. So, flip the screen. We're trying to catch, uh, trying to catch Poe. So Lorik says, "I do not care about this rock. Brilliant. I'm going to make sure I'm engaged." He's got Ray focus. From the looks of it, he's got about three focus tokens. No damage, no consequences, as they say. Going to have a lot of uh, stressing options there. <laughs> How good is that uh, Ezra stress bug in its, it's, all its variations? It's fantastic. I mean, just the that ability, the, plus have having access to R three A two, like right there. Mm -hmm. That's just <laughs> that's ridiculous. Um, it's too good. Because it's a major, it's a major threat that it's extremely hard to kill, and it's how many points is this version? Uh, Twenty-four. Yeah, it's a touch more. It still, uh, still comes in cheaper than the, the classic uh, stress hog. Yep. So this is uh, Rex auto thrusters safe, but the condition has been applied. So a little bit less damage into uh, into work. It looks like it's still range one. So only, no, oh, no, it's range two, two dice. That's going to hit. So two hole left on work. I don't think he's a uh, pop chewy yet, so he's still in this is sturdy shape. Range one from Lorik. No damage. Wow. <laughs> Hey, um, while we're on that topic about uh, stressing, did you get to stream any matches uh, between a heavy stress squad and uh, the Yor Aces? Oh, yeah. yeah well, who, who do you feel like has the advantage in those, in terms of that mechanic at least? That's, uh, man, I think it's really dependent on how good the ace play is there. That's one shield on Lorik. If... Uh, Uh, 
hit crit. And that's going to be one more shield on Lorik. And it looks like we're going to get some damage. Nope, just a shield. Those were TLTs. And we're getting a first damage card. I think, uh, I think in that matchup, <clears throat> what happens is you have to use your to protect your aces from becoming stressed out, and you're you're limited to doing the shenanigans like going through debris and the K-turn. So you take away that weapon, which is a, a huge piece that the aces have been using now to stay competitive, right? Just right. take advantage of being able to turn around and still have double double repositioning, still have expertise available. Um, it just really comes down to, all right, now you have to play, I don't want to say fair, but you have to, <laughs> you have to, uh, your positioning matters more, less shenanigans available. I sure think that's enough. a better way to say it. I am, I'm enjoying their uh, fairly brisk rate of play. Oh, they're playing fast, for sure. I would say definitely, definitely faster than usual as I was watching. Uh, I mean, I've watched tons of games. Their attack phase was very fast. <laughs> Feels very end game esque. So after having done all the work on uh, the average number of turns in a game, like, man, mm -hmm. Dion, you do so many things. <laughs> so it's remarkable. Um, across these uh, games you've been streaming, well, what would you say the. Bye, Jeremy. Bye. Fly safe. Fly better. <laughs> uh, what, what would you say is uh, just roughly in, off the top of your head the, the percentage rate of games actually going to conclusion? Going to conclusion. I mean, um, as, as opposed to going to time and you know that those I, I, those those issues of oh I'm just up on points so now I'm going to not engage. The the number of games going to time has increased. I would say significantly has gone up. Um, and I would even say the number of turns has gone up only because of, you know, game states where it's like, all right, regen, regen, right. regen. Um, especially with the popularity of, of the archetype of Miranda, Ezra, and Lorik. Mm -hmm. and you get those end games where you have, like, Will and, and Andrew at Adepticon. Like, they played right. a ridiculous <laughs> amount of turns. Um, yeah. It just makes me think, uh, so earlier in the year plus like mm -hmm. it, actually let's let's start like going as far back as 2016 when yep. they got rid of intentional draws and then they worked on salvo those used to be extraordinarily rare circumstances and it feels like uh, going to salvo is happening a lot more often the, with good, greater much greater frequency than uh, previously but people are building their lists in order to win at time like right. that the whole archetype of 100 point ace the reason you fly kylo is to be be more points at time um or I'll, just kid out miranda heavier yeah <laughs> exactly just miranda's yeah, by one or two points exactly the bid the race for the thickest miranda you know oh tasty <laughs> all right so we're marking Ezra out of the way so that Chris's Jess can looks like perform a K turn. Right, I'm not sure where Ezra's gonna go. As long as he's got that rear arc pointed in the correct direction, it doesn't really matter. Huh? Not too much. So Rex staying concentrated on Poe, lowering the the uh, attack value here um, on uh, on Poe's attacks on the hawk, trying to keep keep that hawk alive. As good as Rex is for uh, his points, it is the it's always been the one awkward piece in, in that uh, his dial is much more different. He can't. He can't go slow, especially, you know, he had to do that two bank to clear the stress. So you got to really plan out where 
Where are you going to put him? All right, Lorik one bank. Just trying to make sure you have Arc on Rourke. That's going to be a range one shot. We're probably going to see Chewbacca used here. And Ezra just putting his arc in a dangerous position. Love the teamwork there, cooperation. Make sure that those uh, ships line up at the front and back guides. I do like the addition of the, the middle line in 2.0, just so that you have a, because there's so much wiggle room in the, in the pegs when you're trying to do the, <laughs> in the, uh, the railroad tracks. Now that we get the line, there's a, at least a closer, more definitive spot where it's going to be, except it, on the one who hurts. <laughs> well, even there, it, it'll yeah. really help a ton on those uh, like larger bases that are doing the hard turns. Yeah. Uh, because you know, you, when you're using the Vassal choo-choo tracks. Yep. Uh, you know, it's a it's a solid solution, but not when you can't even identify where those middle points are. Yeah, very true. Um, so as long as uh, the paint is on paint now. Yeah. I like to put out another. Uh, have they figured it out yet? I mean, it's like uh, in terms of uh, the third party laser painter kind of people how to add the line yeah i heard you talking about in the last cast i don't i was talking to andrew knuckles about it because he he's the one that makes our gold squadron podcast templates right. and the issue is uh labor wise it mm -hmm. takes more time to to try to perfectly align a set a previous set that's not in like the sheet of acrylic mm -hmm. because of the i mean just bumping the machine gets it out of out of right. alignment so it would be cheaper just to make new templates. The, so, but there is a market for, hey, if you want me to add lines, it's going to cost I'll X pay. amount of money. Yeah. So. That ain't no problem. I got, I got templates I need to update. Here's our range one shot from Rex. Oh, no, sorry. That was Ezra. Double, she's going to double stress uh, onto Lorik. Misses the shot. Here's Gunner. Hit uh, two hits. Has a focus. Uh, he has reinforced active. He could spend the focus and not take any damage. He's taken one already. He's going to want that uh, for offense. Yep. There you go. Takes one there. Does Poe have arc on Rourke? We'll find out here. It's four dice, range one into someone. That's Poe's ability. Three dice. This is into Rex. Hit, hit, hit. Oh, he's dead. He's out of there. Popped. That means his uh, condition goes away. Evaporates. <laughs> There's that aforementioned focus. There you go. Four hits. Two evades. Takes two and uh, using that Chewbacca to keep him alive. Plus one shield on Rourke. One hole left. Spends the focus on the TLT. First shot. That's a shield on Jess. Then there's two. Whoops. Oh, <laughs> wrong die. Two evades. Avoids the TLT there. Just taking the range two shot. See if he could finish off Rourke. Has one reroll. Oh, Natty's. Focus. That'll get the shield off. So Chewbacca doing the work there. It's the only reason why Rourke's still alive. Range one, Jess Pava into Lorik. Ooh. Oh, that's going to hurt. That could be a dead Lorik. Uh, evade, reinforce the back, only takes two, this hit crit. 
Oh, two crits, double damage, damage engine. That engine's painful for sure. He's down to one hole. Let's go ahead and put the damage engine on the overlay. That engine should uh, come into uh, large play with, with dials here. Mm-hmm. Because um, he, he still has uh, a couple of rays banked, it looks like. Should have been able to get a, a, another shot uh, with Lorik, but now he can't dial up any turns. And Rourke's going to come into play too here because there's a good chance that Lorik can be PS killed. You make sure you have something to, that has him in arc at range one or even in range two would be fine. And uh, you Sneak one through with no reinforce. Mm -hmm. And I think the ship to do that on Chris's side is going to be Jess. If Jess can make sure to have a arc on target, make sure to focus, should have it. Heck, even the bug could do it at that point. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Although he'll probably want uh, Ezra to see if he can catch Poe in the rear arc and double stress him up. There's always that issue of greed. Do mm -hmm. you go for the sure thing or do you go for uh, the control? Who, who would you think is uh, up in this match by, at this point now? Well, I think, uh, I think Chris is in the driver's seat right now as long as Rourke is alive. Mm. Um, if he can get Lorik off of the board, that's going to be a huge boon because then uh, you still have a double stress Jess. Yes, she has uh, prime threats so she can still uh, move around, but... Uh, he still has the tools. Jess, with the stress bug, can kill Poe. You have to just double stress him once and then chase him down. But the fewer and fewer ships that, uh, you know, as, as these ships start getting removed, Poe's power it gets uh, increasingly magnified. Oh, yeah, for sure. So uh, they're asking in the chat, uh, their records are both X and 2. This is a play-in game for the top 16. And also during uh, during that combat phase, we want to make sure we say thank you to Mo3. Oh, I just lost your name. There he goes. Mo3718, thank you for becoming a Twitch Prime subscriber, as well as Matt Sunjim. You guys are awesome. Do both players have uh, sufficient MOV to Yeah, they're to close. They were close. They were both at, uh, they were only at table 10. There's always the heartbreak of uh, whoever comes in 17 mm -hmm. on those points. Thank you to Tiny Sore for your Twitch Prime subscription. Yeah, so r right now, Rourke is in a position where he just, if he can, he knows that Kyle wants to take him off the board. That's points to get. But if he can place Kyle in a spot that compromises his flank and he can get Jess and Ezra ready to go, I think that's the way he might, uh, might go for it. Okay. There's Kyle moving Jess in. He's got prime thrusters. That's why he's able to boost, even though he's stressed. Jess doesn't move. He's just keeping the arc out there. Geometrically. I don't think it fits, right? Geometrically, it should get past the base, but I don't think there's enough room behind Lorik to land it. Mm -hmm. You gotta try. That's gonna be snug. Okay, I think it might it, it that, might fit. The marker looks a little canted. Woo! Okay. Jess gets over, no action because of the bump. She'll still have a reroll if Ezra stays close.
So he opted to just uh, disengage Lorik as, as much as possible. So Ezra still range one of Jess Pava. Kyle's Jess, that is. And here's Poe getting in an aggressive position, trying to take out that Hawk. And uh, that's, a, that's a good kill. Mm -hmm. Double uh, inflating fire there between the two X-Wings on that Hawk. Just die, bird, die. <laughs> All right, so we get to the start of combat. Rourke needs to decide who is going to be PS12. That's the, that's the decision Chris is making right now. Well, he can't do, he's, he's not going to be able to destroy either of the, the X-Wings. Um, you have to take Lorik off the board at this point, right? Yeah, I think that's your priority. Get, get the points you can. Take one ship out. All right, using Rourke to pump Jess to PS12. Here comes range one. No modifiers except the reroll. He's got one. Two hits. That'll do it. So Chris has pulled ahead 30 points to 14. 23 minutes left in the round. Range one. Spin the target lock. That's four hits into the Hawk. The Hawk is done. Doesn't get to shoot again. I think the other issue that uh, Chris is going to turn into here is with the positioning with Jess and the stress bug, they're pointed in opposite directions. It's going to take them a while to bring them back together to really make them a threat. Well, Jess, Jess is going to at, at least bank in uh, to pursue. The bug's got to come back around and try and uh, form a pincer. This is a really big deal in terms of the number of stress being laid out here. Mm -hmm. I still think... Uh, Man, that, that pose is going to be a, a real issue, particularly since it oh, has optics. Two hits. Just don't just do not do pose. Don't, just take right, it. Just, <laughs> just take it. He takes it. All right. There it goes. You'll get it back with R2-D2. You'll be fine. in the chat asking where you can you find standings but standings have been posted on a lot of the uh, x-wing facebook groups we unfortunately didn't have the time to uh to post those but we will post them going into the top 16. i can report though that uh duncan and nathan were undefeated going into this final round of swiss and uh, just i don't know what happened with their salvo but that's yep that's where they went yep i'm sorry uh, D uh, duncan howard nathan id preeminent x-men players mm-hmm So if Kyle can just keep his highly maneuverable X-Wings <laughs> yeah. alive, how, how, how many uh, points is he up now? Uh, Kyle's got 46 after taking out Rourke. Yep. And, the, and the fact that Ezra didn't, didn't get the double stress there is, is a big deal. Especially because this next upcoming turn, Kyle could put Poe in a spot where he can't stress him. So 
So Chris's Jess Pava is the clear base. Kyle's is the orange, as well as Poe is orange. And here's a two hard. A wide arc, a one forward, keeps Poe uh, unstressed. It looks like he's doing something bigger than that. That's a one bank. Might fit. Yeah, Chris was pretty uh, savvy there. <laughs> yes, uh, making sure that he stays behind mm -hmm. and, and in pursuit. But uh, yeah, with, with Poe's mastery of everything, regen, the just abilities, it's so difficult to kill. And then uh, finally, the, the boost at the higher pilot skill. I think, uh, right, which Kakuri's got to be in the driver's seat at this point. Oh, Poe's fantastic. He's up on points. So Poe shoots first. I guess Poe didn't have a shot, so it's just Ezra. I think they uh, right checked Art. Must have been very close. That's going to be a miss. Gunner triggers. R3A2 again. And one went out the box. Two hits. Yeah, two evades. Yeah, I think as this game grinds down, what's going to end up happening, we're probably going to have Ezra versus Poe in the in the end game. Um, with time ticking down and basically Poe just try, <laughs> trying right. his darndest to just, uh, just get through that defensive ability. A just Pava without any wingman is a sad lady. Mm -hmm. so she's completely out of shields now. So what do, what do you think of the difference between these uh, three-point rebel squads versus uh, the, the, you're finding room for Rex for the fourth ship. How's that been breaking down so far in, uh, from what you've seen? So from what I've seen, a lot of the, um, the problem is we're, we're all about points fortresses right now. Right. Right? So um, usually the three, if you match them up, we're, we're going to end up in this type of end game where you have a more expensive ship and as soon as you get down to one-on-one, -on -one, the person who has who brought the the more expensive ace, they spent that uh, the points you would have put on the fourth ship into an ace like Poe, uh, they're they're just going to be ahead, uh, and in the driver's seat. And then once once you're in that situation, Kyle no longer has to play um, aggressively. Now we are in round three of a cut right before a cut to uh, to top. Kyle is also going to be looking at trying to get as much MOV as possible to get into that cut. Because while this is a play, it is a possible playing game, he has to do the work and try to kill all these ships, get as many points as possible, and uh, if he can, keep Jess alive in order to save those. Just a shout out to, uh, I think this is rigged um, in the Twitch chat. Just want to say thank you for your compliments. Uh, we do work hard to make sure that we know what we're talking about. I just love the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we pay attention to it all the time, so that's what we do. There's that strange uh, blur between the yeah, just doing it for the joy and the love and then it, what it does become work when it's mandatory. <laughs> yes. So uh, the shot misses. R3A2 again. We're officially <laughs> with a 10 stress token. Ooh. Three hits. Throwing hot fire. Just power reroll. Debating the. F That's post focus, right? I believe so.
Maybe you should probably hang on to that focus. <laughs> He's taking it. Takes two. Jess living on one hole plus integrated astromech. Here's range one. Spends a focus. Three hits. Ezra Billy, so good. Oh, fantastic. It's so good. Takes only one there. First card. And I think Poe's just out of, uh, yeah, Joe Poe's out of arc, so. Three hits from Jess Pava into Poe. Oh, no, this is into Jess. Into Jess, yep. And that's going to be a dead Jess. One plus integrated. So, Chris pulls ahead, 57 to 46. Can he, we got into that end game I talked about, exactly. right? Jess and Ezra have 14 minutes to either kill Poe or just live. Like, right. that's, that's the win condition right there. And Kyle needs to kill something, anything. And his best bet, honestly, is to turn around and take out Jess Pava. What's uh, the opposing Jess at? Uh, untouched, right? It's untouched. I'm just thinking with the defensive ability, like every time it's just, you, what's the math? You, you're, you're the math guy. What do you think? <laughs> I'm the math guy on, on my logs. Actually, that always bothers me because Dallas is the engineer. Yeah. But I'm a, I'm a filthy live arts uh, guy that's just, <laughs> that cares about math. <laughs> what, what, what's the question though? So what's your, uh, you know, is it a better choice to go after Jess mathematically or after Ezra? I'm kind of like, my pseudo math, no numbers behind it. What I'm seeing is that Jess can focus every time before Pose attacks it, so it essentially could be a wash there with Ezra's ability. Um, but Ezra has less health, so maybe the answer is to continue just to go after Ezra, but you're gonna end up double, triple stress, all that stuff. Right, it's, it's about positioning here. So we're going to take a pause here. Bunch of loud announcements. And uh, with M, let's talk about M9G8. That's about to come into play here. Chris is Jess. If necessary, Poe could black one it off. But, That's very uh, true. Uh, that means uh, no target locking for Poe. So uh, Ezra's going to be presenting, uh, going to continue to present his rear. Um, the, with only, t what, 12, 12 and change remaining, yep. it's pretty tough to, to swing back around on Jess. I, th I think I would make the, the choice to, to keep uh, banging away at... Uh, no, he's just going to disengage. Hmm. All right, as long as uh, the, the pace of play is brisk, he'd be able to take take the, the, the long way, the long route around. Um, but isn't he going to get double stress here unless he gets out of range? He's got to get out. All right, I think this is the attempt to get out of the arc and out of range. I think he might be just outside of range three. Uh-uh. Got him. Yeah, seven and a half ship uh, base lengths. There you go. Auto thrusters is not required to use. So if he was going to disengage, <laughs> he should have uh, boosted the other way to make sure. He's probably try, trying to get the best of both worlds there to uh, get a better vector to come back in. Two hits from Ezra. You got to let one of those three if you through if you can. You must throw three dice. Oh, bro. Uh -oh. Uh, forced <laughs> to evade it. Double uh -oh. stress, Poe. And nothing on that. This will not hit. So now he's got to take the long way around anyway. Yep. And here comes Jess. While Jess is in pursuit, right? Well, at, at this point, you just got to believe in the plot armor. Let Poe do Poe things. Yeah. <laughs> and just, you know, ignore Jess. He's the best pilot in the resistance. <laughs> yep. It's canon. Oh, not, not to, not to tease that which we're trying to avoid being tickled by. But uh -huh. there have been so many. Um, I don't know if they're, they're like leaks or anything, but so many updates in random places everywhere. Have we seen what what Poe might look like? Is that a thing? In uh, two point two point I have no idea. I I haven't heard anything. I mean, he's got to be 
good. But he won't have, uh, presumably, he won't have access to those uh, force abilities. Correct. Well, we don't, we don't know. He, had the, he has got a force tree in the back of his yard, according to the comic books. Oh, does he? Yeah. He's got <laughs> what does a, that mean? His, his, Luke Skywalker gives his mother, Shara Bay, a force tree, and he grows up around it, which people assume attributes to his like high level of kind of those things like he might be like not necessarily like Jedi force sensitive but oh that's a no, that's a little disappointing to me I, I prefer the the wedges of the right of, of the cannon they're just <laughs> I'm just good yeah they don't cheat they don't right. need no <laughs> cheating jet, Jedi powers <laughs> all right Poe here uh, is just trying to get into spots where Jess can't shoot him but I think he's still going to be just it oh maybe did he get out doesn't look no, I think he's got he's in like still it. range two he still has his focus. <laughs> yeah, that. What's really funny is, uh, you know, when you see players bending it one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I find myself guilty of that. You know, oh. you got that bias and you're like, of oh, I, I am bending it. Like, shoot, let's, let's line this up. Oh, what is this mark for? I do not know. Oh, that's just to hold the ship in place to make sure it doesn't get bumped back. Very meticulous. I approve. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> this is, well, I don't know if I, oh, it's the judge. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Brent's got this. He's one of the best. Looks like it's starting to catch that corner. Brent Wong, one of our illustrious judges. You know, as a as a little tip though. Yep. Um, I find it actually much easier using the eyeball test if if you're able to get uh, behind the the range, like down the pipe of the range ruler, like low, mm -hmm. down the just looking down the barrel at table height. Like I I found that to be much more accurate mm -hmm. than fiddling around. And then it's it's always the the knocking sh of ships oh, around. And it's goodness, like, oh yeah. well, now we don't know, and I guess whatever happens happens. It looks like it got judged out of arc. But uh, I like that, Brent. I, I might have to start using that myself. As a player, it's like, well, whatever the judge calls, that's final. Right. Uh, when I am the judge. When you though, are the judge, oh, you gotta. Oh, it's yeah. terrifying. Because <laughs> if you bump something, you just feel like garbage. Right. That you're just like, oh, I guess we're gonna roll for it. <laughs> And then if you're on the losing side of the, whoever's losing on the losing side of that role feels bad. Right. So I think I think Poe absolutely just has to go get Ezra. Got to chase him now. But Jess, Jess still has some word about that. Maybe a boost for a block here. Oh. So if, if you're flying Poe right now, do you even worry about those stress, like clearing those stress? You, no. You just, just, just got to go start shooting guns. You got seven minutes only left. All right, you go, you go get your, your target. All right, so Jess stays right there. She, this is, uh, she just engages the target lock. So M9G8 is active now, which is going to make Kyle struggle to get in that last oh little boy. bit of damage. Uh, okay, that was a three. <laughs> yep. a turning battle this is this is where um i felt uh, this is part of what made me fall in love with x-wing yep. too mm -hmm. yeah like you, you go back to the historical world war one world war two dog fights and it's all about turning ratios and uh yeah pow power to weight ratios yep. m9g8 goes back into a crit and plenty from ezra wow What's the health remaining on Ezra? Ezra got two. I'm pretty sure. Yep, yep. Oh, sorry, three. He's got three left. Yeah, there's only one, one card there. I gotta admit, Dion, you're you're a 
you're a master at this. I don't know how you keep track of all <laughs> which ship is which, like, and read the Twitch. Practice. That's all. I, I have. I probably have more practice than anyone. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all. I still mess up though, all the time. <laughs> oh, you you are blessed though. You're uh, you're finding them. Um, you're getting some good matches. Yeah, th this th everything has come down to the wire. Um, the, especially the last two days. I'm not sure how the first one went because I wasn't I was playing, but um, sounded like there were lots of good matches. I'm looking forward to uh, looking at them, and everything will be posted from this weekend uh, on our YouTube page. Go ahead and uh, subscribe there. Turn on notifications. I'll be exporting them and uploading them to our uh, YouTube page. All right. Well, this is just fate now. Oh, ooh. oh that is. <laughs> that'll land. That'll land. Nubs don't count, right? Nubs don't count. He's got range one. He's going to need it, especially with that forced reroll from Jess Pava. Every dice counts. Looking for another hit. That's all uh, eyeballs. Yeah, that got knocked around. So it'd be three with uh, the posability. Oh, <laughs> takes one. Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Ezra just keeps rolling paint. Here we go. Hit and forced to miss. Well, at this point, that's not even a, uh, a concern. And here's Jess. So Jess throwing hot fire. Might actually get some damage in here. Oh, oh. choices. He needs that focus token. Yeah, you take take the two. With all that stress, yeah, you need that modification. So looks like we're down to one shield on Poe. So Kyle will need uh, multiple turns here. Um, yeah, he's got to get that dial down as soon as possible. Exactly. I, Chris has options. Mm -hmm. He can. Um, so he's 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 going to uh, place Ezra to make sure that there won't be a shot uh, inside Poe's ability to to, to turn, oh, which means um, if he can block, so yep. then Jess should be able to get uh, a solid, maybe another range one shot. So what are we thinking, like a one bank to the right, two bank to the right situation here for Ezra? Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to eyeball it. Should work. Because with uh, only uh, two and a half minutes left, Kyle can't afford to uh, disengage again to create that space to, to wheel back around. All right, so there's a two bank, just keeping guns on target there. Yeah, Chris understands it. He's not thinking he's going to, I mean, he might kill Poe, but it's it's uh, very unlikely. So it's the one bank. Just getting inside that bubble. Poe cannot turn around. He won't be able to use any type of K-turn or boost. Oh, he is disengaging. It'd be the correct call if he had more time, but... The next excited. excitement. That's a uh, Rasta Mace. His son just probably made the cut. But I thought Europe was bad. <laughs> All right, here's, here's Jess, range one. Poe, that's going to be the last shield off Poe. We got one minute and 20 seconds left. This is probably the last round. I called it wrong, honestly. I thought Poe had the advantage here, but with uh, up against the clock, though. Yep. Unlimited time, Poe wins. Sure. But we, the clock is a is a mean mistress. <laughs> So, 50 seconds left.
unless we have that clock wrong, should be ending soon. Uh, Chris wants to try to see if he can kill Poe for the MOV. That's what he's looking for right now. It's not time to disengage. He, went, he needs every single point to make sure he gets in the cut. Well, he's got the, the angles. Yep. I'm a little surprised he didn't uh, flight assist there. Was uh, Poe in? No, uh, he has oh, M98. Oh, M98, sorry. M9. Yeah, flipped it. So this will be the last round. As your misses, hit crit. Three. Uh, those those matter. Those matter. Is he dead? No, I guess he can't die because he got. Well, he hasn't. Dealt, he has to deal those cards. Did, that did, could be a double did, damage. He didn't regenerate, right? Yeah. Okay, and it isn't. If it was a double damage, he, he kills Bo there. Sure. So fantastic game. Wow. Played <laughs> by both these players. Chris Schaefer takes it. Uh, good work by Kyle uh, Metal. Uh, thank you for everybody for watching this round. D, thank you for commentating with me. Oh, my pleasure. I, th I think Chris <laughs> pulled it off by making sure that Lorik wasn't uh, a factor in the opening engagement. Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah, it, it happened. Um, Chris did everything he needed to do. I like that he was patient. He was able to use that top corner and made it so that, like you said, Ka Lorik was behind. He was out of that engagement there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take a small break. We'll be back with a top 16 match. Um, I don't know who we'll get, but we'll get somebody. D, can you stick around for one more game? Uh, it depends if uh, Farmer and I are getting interviews. I'll follow his lead. We'll let you know. All right. He's your guy. So uh, we'll be back for top 16, Gold Squadron podcast stream, X-Wing Worlds, first edition, 2018. Last Love one. you, X-Wings. <laughs> we'll be back.